Hey everybody, Aaron Blaze here, and welcome. It's another Friday. We are doing a live stream. It's October 7th, <laughs> the day before my lovely wife Vedanta's birthday on October 8th. And just for that reason, say hi, Vedanta. Hi, Vedanta. Yeah, we got Vedanta here with us. Nick is out of the studio. He is on his way. He's on the road driving. Uh, he should be hitting Texas about now. He's driving to Los Angeles, California, with about 300 books in tow. Uh, out to the Lightbox event that we're going to be at next week. So oh, he gets to drive, I get to fly. So there you go. Um, but they're going to have a good time. He's brought his family, and they're going to go to the Grand Canyon and do all kinds of fun stuff on the way out there. But uh, today, I thought, I, and we've got Dustin here as well. Dustin's going to be out there with us in, uh, at Lightbox. Yo. I'm trying to rehydrate. So excited. And uh, so that's going to be fun. We're leaving on Wednesday. Uh, next Wednesday, and uh, the the event uh, is uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and we come back on Monday. So we're going to be getting it set up on Thursday, and we got all kinds of fun stuff. But like I said, we're bringing a lot of books. So if you're going to be at the event, uh, come by and pick up a book. I'll do a drawing for you. So, uh, so there you go. Um, we've got a few things we want to take care of, like we always do before we get rolling. We got a couple of slides to talk about. Uh, let's talk about the animal flash sale that we have going on this weekend. Um, yes, the animal I'll... flash sale. That is uh, currently going on this weekend only. Yeah. And uh, all animal drawing lessons are currently 70% off. Yeah, that's pretty good. 70% yeah. hard to be percent 70% off. off. So you're only paying 30% of the uh, of the cover price. It's kind of a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, go on over to CreatureArtTeacher.com and check out all of our... Uh, all of our animal drawing courses. I love doing those. I've got some more uh, in the, you know, coming up soon. Uh, we're going to be doing some on primates. We're going to be doing some on uh, the, uh, the big five of, of Africa, uh, North American big game. We're going to be doing all kinds of fun stuff with that. Also, um, we're really excited to announce um, my second art of book, uh, the art of Aaron Blaze. Um, we're almost sold out. We've only got about 30 copies left of our first volume. So that was pretty successful. Very happy about that. So we decided to do a volume two. And, uh, and the first 500 orders on that, you're guaranteed to get a signature copy. So I will sign it for you. And, uh, um, and it's going to be just as big, just as full. Um, we only were able to go through a, 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 a fraction of my available art for the first volume. And so we purposely held back quite a bit to, to fill up the second volume. And it's uh, it's going pretty quickly. So go on over to Creature Books, is it, Dustin? Yes, that is correct. It is slash books. Yeah. And, Creature, uh, artteacher.com slash books. You can order pre-order there. We're going to probably, and like I, I want to re emphasize that, it's pre-ordering. So we the book, is like we did last time, except we won't have the problem of COVID this time, knock on wood. Knock on wood. Uh, but we are doing, we're taking pre-orders and we're going to try to get it out by the second quarter of next year. So that's going to be, that's the timeline that we're shooting for uh, coming up. And USA customers get free shipping with the code USA Books. Yes. So if you're from the United States, you get free shipping on that pre-order. All right. Um, also, November 7th through the 10th, um, Ronnie Williford and myself are going to be doing a live plain air watercolor workshop here in Florida, literally in my backyard, not literally, uh, but uh, uh, pretty close, pretty close to being literal because it's right over the fence of my backyard in Wakaiva State Park, which is a beautiful park, beautiful springs, beautiful scenery, which is why we want to do it here. But we're also going to be, we're renting out a bunch of cabins and we're going to have fires and, and we've got a, a big lecture hall. We've got a pool. We've got all kinds of great stuff. Um, it's going to be camping, well, at least in camp cabins anyway. It's not going to be tent camping. And we're going to be painting during the day and lecturing at night and talking art and, and all kinds of fun stuff. So if you're interested in that, uh, go over to creatureartteacher.com slash... Slash camp. camp. And there are currently only Thank five you. spots available. Five yeah, there's only left. five spots left. So we're almost sold out. Almost there. Almost sold out. So go, if you're interested, jump on it. We've got a pretty good international group of people coming together. So um, and the other ones that we've done in the past, we did one at Peckerton Castle just south of Manchester, England, uh, right before COVID. That was a and, ton of fun. Yeah, that was fun. It was a great time. And then uh, and then right after that, um, this was literally when COVID was happening, uh, before they shut everything down, we did another one in uh, Sarasota, Florida. 
that went really well. Yeah, like I think it was like the week after the workshop. That's when yeah, everything, everything shut, shut down. down. So now we're back uh, post COVID, and we're doing our first live plain air watercolor workshop, and uh, at Wakiva Springs. Na uh, state park, not national park, state park. So there you go. Did I miss anything, Dustin? Uh, I think that's about it. I think that's all three. Yeah, you went over Lightbox, CTN. Yeah, Lightbox, CTN is going to be in November. Oh, that's true. We yeah. will be out there for that. We are cranking away on Snow Bear as fastly as fastly as, as fastly. fast as I can. Uh, but I thought today it would be fun. We're going to be getting together with Procreate out at Lightbox. I'm going to be giving some lectures. And one of them, one of the lectures I'm going to be giving is uh, animating and procreate. And so I thought, you know what, why not have a little bit of that today? I'll, I'll do a little bit of animation, something simple, maybe a little head turn or something. But for those of you that um, are new to it, I thought it'd be fun to introduce you to it. So that's what we're going to do. Make a horse do a backflip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have a horse walk backwards down a spiral staircase. <laughs> okay, so um, the first thing you need to do to set up uh, when you're setting up your, um, to animate in here, you got to go up when you set up a new document and you go into your uh, uh, canvases or, or you go to the work the workbench right there, the uh, wrench, not the bench. Wrench. Real quick, um, yes. Stone Off t uh, Folly on YouTube just gave a five euro donation oh wow, it says hi you. aaron just finished the bird to prey course any uh current plans on another animal course yes uh we're probably going to be doing one in the next few months uh primates we've been getting a lot and, and uh reptiles we got we've had a lot of one a lot of uh, requests for reptiles yeah reptiles Sorry, and i'm drinking carbonated water i'm trying to <laughs> talk and not burp at the same time Oh, trying to do that with Coca Cola and that, yeah, no, yeah, <laughs> it does not it? work. Nice hair, Aaron. Oh, thanks. I I don't have any product in it today, so it's just kind of flippy. <laughs> oh my god, it looks so good. <laughs> you look so, amazing. Um, so the, what you have to do is you you click on the wrench, you go to canvas, and you click on animation assist. That's what gives you uh, your thing here. Is that a little out of focus for you? Is that? Uh, it's for me that I can't read. It the does word look a little out of. Focus. It's very slight. I might need Dustin to come and focus it, but uh, we'll see. Just when you had the word, when you had the words up, I could, do, yeah, but that's fine. Just... Let me see. You know, when you push the gallery over there, and you can. Yeah, it's probably it's probably trying to. Uh, is it is it auto focus right now? Yeah, it's trying. It, oh, okay. I mean, Hopefully, not, it won't. It's not like it's not like completely blurred. Gotcha. Like, the screen is a little, but yeah. It should be, it should be okay. Good. Sorry, that's all right. So and so, what you get here is you get a little, uh, you get your timeline down here. Right now, we've only got one drawing, so that's what that is there. And if I go into settings, I can set it to loop when I play it back. Um, I can I can play with the frames per second. Right now, I've got it set for fifteen frames per second, but we can adjust that as we go. Then it's got onion skin frames. I've got that maxed out, and then the onion skin opacity. I've got knocked back to about. I'm going to knock it back to about thirty eight percent. And then um, I like the the secondary frames to be colored. So uh, on the on the uh, onion skin. So the drawings before and after will have two different colors. So I can tell my my in betweens. And that's pretty much it. That's all we got to do. And uh, and all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to start drawing. I'm going. Whoops. Whoa. Hey. Whoa. Whoa. Hello. Whoa. Whoa. There we go. Easy, there, partner. Easy. Uh, Kasra on uh, Facebook asks, are you doing a snow bear this live stream? Yeah, I thought I'd do. Let's see here. Do a little animation and procreate. You do Glenn? Yes. You going to draw Glenn? Yeah. Why? Am I, my, my hand is... There we go. Do you have the uh, touch uh, touch enabled? Well, it's always enabled. Uh. I've never been on the Twitter on here before. Can't even see comments, huh? I've I've never I've never yeah, had a it's weird I there's like no comment line of anything. Well, did so you, did you click on the I did. I if I expand it it takes the whole screen. Yeah, but there's like no you know what I mean? There's no comment section. That did you yeah. Or is this it? No. That's that's messages. I know there's a comment section somewhere because Nick's in Twitter. Yeah, I'm not seeing a, a comment section. That's, that's I'm sorry, it's my first time doing the Twitter. 
It's okay. Doing this at Twitter. Maybe there's not a lot of people on it today. It's only 11. Oh, there's a guy. Maybe it's some, maybe it's just somebody hasn't uh, commented yeah. on it. Huh? I don't know. Maybe. I'll just keep my eye out. But we got plenty of people on t um, Twitch. All right, Twitchers. Crispy, crispy Cactus. Hey, Crispy Cactus. Stuff. A twig fall from, uh, on YouTube asks, is Snow Bear a short? Yes, so Snow Bear is my animated short that we're doing. And uh, it's about a lonely polar bear in the Arctic. And uh, he's having trouble making friends. And so he just decides one day to, to make a friend. And he makes a Snow Bear. And Jelly Bellyfish on YouTube uh, donated. Jelly Bellyfish? Jelly Bellyfish. Donated four dollars and ninety nine cents, and says, "Hi, Aaron. I'm studying your uh, art for a master masterpiece assignment for my digital illustration class. Uh, can I let you know on Twitter when I'm done?" Why, sure. Please do. That'd be awesome. Hey, your mic is on, right? Mine. Uh, Budanta. I'm pretty sure it's on. Can anyone? See, that's what I'm saying. It, it when, when Nick, I've I've listened to the playback on those. Hello? They don't work very well. Yeah, that's show, that mic show doesn't those. work. Hello. I show the audio is on. Like when she when she talks, it actually does pick it up. Hmm. Yeah. You you probably have to speak up. They said they hear me loud and clear. Loud and clear. <laughs> loud and clear. This is ASMR. It's all coming together. Uh, Letizia on Facebook asks, uh, can we find this lesson also on your uh, YouTube channel? What lesson? Uh, this one? I'm, I'm guessing this uh, this YouTube. Uh, and uh, yes, we usually save uh, the live streams as recordings on, onto YouTube. Yeah, all the lives usually get posted on the YouTubes. Uh, on, the YouTube. on the tubes of view? On the YouTubes. Tubey tubes. All right, so now I just want to add a frame. There's my onion skin. You can see there's a red ghost image there. And um, I want to start drawing the net, the the keyframe that we're going to be uh, animating into. Dance bear, dance. Yes. You gonna make him turn? Yes. I want some nice drawings here. So you want to bring that up. But the cool thing about animating in Procreate is the ease with which you can do it. It is so easy, if you're familiar with Procreate, it's so easy to get in here and just start animating. Uh, Pina Boy Tunes on YouTube... Uh says uh aaron i just watched brother bear certified classic <laughs> i didn't e i didn't even see coda story coming uh still i must ask uh would you do anything different if you did it again oh yeah i'm sure there i mean there's a lot of things i would do differently there's a lot of takes by the actors that i feel like i i probably should have changed and a lot of different things um there's a couple of story elements that i wish i would have fought for a little bit more um, that uh, I didn't fight for is, you know, and, and but I think overall I, I really like the movie. And but yeah, there's there's always some stuff that you would change. Yes, I'm on my way. Oh, yeah. Such a good movie. I've seen it once. There you go. And. Uh, Gene on Facebook asks, uh, for beginners with zero experiences, uh, do you have uh, courses for those? I absolutely do. Matter of fact, it's, that we've got lots of stuff for folks with no we experience. We have like intro to drawing. But all of our stuff, you know, the anatomy courses, all of that, character design course, you can be a beginner just fine. Don't you have like cartoon drawing too and like some very simple things? Yeah. Yep. 
Like, no, Tim Hodge does uh does one. Doesn't Ronnie do a, an intro to yep. drawing or or color theory or something? He does. Cool. Uh, Lizzie K on YouTube asks, uh, "What uh, pencil tool? Uh, what's the pencil tool that you're currently using to do uh, your rough sketches?" This is just the pencil brush right here, Procreate pencil, and I'm using an Apple pencil, two version two, Apple. Mm -hmm. What's neat here is I can. You know, as I go, you can see I can flip back and forth between the two drawings. And uh, Sonic on YouTube uh, asks, "Hey, Aaron, I'm curious. Uh, do you use the timing charts, uh, timing charts a lot when you animate, or do you just wing it sometimes?" I don't use timing charts at all unless somebody, unless I have assistants following me up. Um, if I have an assistant following me up, then they need to know what I have in mind for the timing, and so I'll use timing charts for that. But for this short, you're doing it all your on your own. Yeah. So because I'm doing it all on my own, I don't. I already have it in my head the timing that I'm going to be using, the, the or that I'm doing from shot to shot, and so I don't need to to put down any charts. Skywacker2 on Twitch asks, I can't make this year's camping class. Um, do you do something like this every year? Um, well, we've, we've been doing it, I wouldn't say every year. We've, we've done three, and they've been kind of sporadic because of COVID. But we will be doing, uh, we'll try, definitely try to do them on a yearly basis. I think if this one goes well, too, and the venue is, is uh, easily accessible, you know? Yeah. Why not do it again? But this is the first one that's actually like a camping trip. Yes. And another question from Gene, and uh, I'm, I'm not sure if it's pronounced Gene or if it's Jean. Just let me know, know which one it is. But, um, but which one do you prefer? Do you prefer Procreate or Photoshop? Well, it depends on what I'm working in. So if I'm using my iPad, like I'm using now, I prefer Procreate. If I'm at my my big computer, then I, I use Photoshop. And uh, Keyboard17 from YouTube uh asks, I've been extremely curious about this. How were the frames colored in The Lion King, Being the Beast, and Mulan, uh, like the colors we see in the final film? How are they colored? Yeah, how are they colored? We, they're drawn on paper first. So none of that was digitally drawn. It was all drawn on paper. But then those drawings got scanned and uh, imported into the computer. And then they were painted on computer. Which which uh, movie was the first to use that tech that technology? That would have been uh, Little Mermaid. Uh, the last shot oh, really? was digital. Yeah. Oh, the very last shot. Yep. Oh wow. The last shot where they're waving that was all done uh, by scanning in and and coloring on computer. Before yeah. that, everything was cell. Yeah, everything was uh, cell. Which cell was a uh, was almost like a type of. Like what? What kind of material would you say it was? Like a type of plastic? It's a clear acetate. Was it? Yeah. So, there's our two drawings. Those are our keys. He's turning his head to look at you. What? What? Hello. So I want to add a frame, but I want to put that frame in between, so I can just grab it and just move it right over. So that's what I've done. So now what I'm going to do, and uh, let me go to my settings. I want to go to my onion pit skin opacity and just knock that up just a little bit so you guys can see it a little better because I know that green is a little hard to see. So now what I want to do, I'm going to have him drop down just a little bit as he's turning his head. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, Roger uh, Cupertino uh, from Facebook asks, when you created original characters for movies, uh, did you have full creative license or did you have to create them based on ideas or suggestions? Yes. So it's both. So you, you, they have to have ideas and suggestions because you have to, you know, somebody goes into it with a vision for the look of the film and your, your character designs have to fit within that design of the movie. So, you know, nobody gets full, uh, carte blanche basically to do whatever they want because it has to fit within the, the look, but within that, within that, you know, those parameters, we've got basically full reign of what we want to do within the parameters. So it's yes and no. On Twitch, Louise Kislart says, yo, love your drawings. What brush do you use for sketching? Well, this one's just the pencil sketch, uh, pencil, procreate pencil. Procreate pencil. Okay. Yeah. I know it's different when you're on your Cintiq, right? And then when I'm drawing traditionally, it's these Mitsubishi 10B pencils. When I'm working in Photoshop, I've got my, my uh, custom brush that I use. I've got all kinds of stuff. Uh, Anahita Gazad from uh, YouTube says, Hi, Aaron. Hey, uh, how's it going, E? How's it going, E? I am from uh, Iran, and I want to learn animation, and I am a super fan of your art and tutorials. Uh, I would like to know, is it possible to get feedback from you? Not right now, it's not. We have a lot of folks um, that are looking for feedback, and we're trying to set up a, a method in order to do that. Um, but right now we just don't have the means to answer everybody, but, but, we, but we are working on it. But if you show up to a live event, then you're more likely to, oh, absolutely. Be able to engage with them. Absolutely. Yeah. In fact, I'm sure you're going to be giving quite a lot of, uh, feedback, feedback and the camping trip. Well, not only the camping trip, but also the light box. Oh, light box yeah. Yeah, I don't know if you have a portfolio review on your schedule at Lightbox, because sometimes you do have that. I, I, I might actually have that. Yeah, because I remember last time at Lightbox and at CTN, you had portfolio reviews where you were for a couple hours with students or professionals, really, that have their portfolios. So what I'm doing, see that head turn? see that head start to turn now these are you know th that's a key that's a key this is a breakdown uh farmer kane from uh youtube asks uh which tablet do you recommend for drawing well i've got an ipad pro here and i love it And uh, James Harris uh, from YouTube uh, asks, a huge fan of you and animation in general. Uh, do people often ask you to draw their pets as cartoon characters? Yes. <laughs> I've had that request many, many, many times. I'm sure you've even had people just straight up demand, like, I want you to draw what my pet. <laughs> And you can have one too for the low, low price of 50,000. <laughs> That's right. For 50,000 rubles. I got to pay my mortgage, people. I got to pay my mortgage. People. A rocket from uh, YouTube says, Did you just start? I have to go to the doctors. Did I just start? Do you just start the stream? Yes. Uh, we yeah we started maybe roughly twenty five minutes ago ish. I'm gonna but, I'm gonna bring. But it don't worry if you up. miss the stream, uh, it will be saved on on YouTube as a recording. We just won't be able to answer your questions at that point. Right. <laughs> Crispy Cactus says Samsung tablets, um, tab tablets are all also awesome for drawing. I have one and would definitely recommend them. Also, the stylus is made by Wacom, so you know you get a high quality. 
I've never used a Samsung tablet. I did, I did know I did know that the uh, the stylus was made by Wacom. I'm a huge fan of Samsung telephones. Even yeah. though I have an iPhone, uh, my heart is always... So, yeah, I've never tried a Samsung tablet either. But when Interesting. I, uh, Interesting. I, I, had met, a, um... I met with the uh, corporate offices uh, at Wacom in Japan a few years ago, and we were talking about their... about all that. Their... Uh, the tablet technology is cool. Well, the Samsung Note, you ha you can draw on it. It has a little pen, you know, that's in the phone. Yeah. I love that. And the touch technology on those, I mean, it's Wacom made, so. So here's our three basic drawings. These are the three drawings that are really going to dictate the movement. Now it's really just a matter of um, smoothing it out. So I'm going to go to my first drawing, and I'm going to add a frame. And it's going to go right in between there. Right in Twix. <laughs> Did you say Twix? Twix. Did you say steak? Missing. Uh, Gene from Facebook asks, uh, "Did it take you long? Did it take you a long time to uh, get used to digital drawing from uh, from hand pencil drawing?" Did Did, did Sorry, it take long it for you to adapt from going traditional to digital? No, it didn't take long to adapt at all. Um, I, uh, I. He already knew how to draw, which was good. <laughs> it helps. <laughs> no, but I. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm trying to think here about my 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 head turn here. Um, I used a Wacom. I, I I started using a Wacom Cintiq, and that was the big turning point for me. And. Uh, but it's it's a, just a different tool. But it's you have to know the basic, the same basic fundamentals of drawing. Yeah, well, you, exactly, you do. And then the thing that really helped me was that ability to sit down, and, you know, have the drawing experience very similar to that of drawing on paper. He's thinking, guys. I'm thinking. <laughs> The in between or the um the key no not a key what is you that can considered? tell this is an in between an in between okay this is still kind of a breakdown actually you yeah, can tell when I start thinking because I start not <laughs> being able to talk <laughs> or you you'll Enemy start hard. you'll start a conversation you'll start talking but then you slow down to eventual stop by the middle <laughs> and then you then you just completely change subject. <laughs> Hi, um, this is Lieutenant Kanem Kaname, Lieutenant Kaname from uh, Twitch. Hi, Aaron. Hi, team. Um, will you do some random drawings in your new book like you did for the first two? I have ordered mine and can't wait to add it to my art book collection. Yeah. Yeah, you did quite a few <laughs> random ones when we were live. You were just drawing uh -huh. in them. And they were kind of thrown in the mix. I wonder who got those. Yeah, I think it was like what, five or five or ten of them. And I'm not sure. <clears throat> But they were pretty sweet. It was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. That was like pretty cool, you guys. Oh, and you will be selling your books at Lightbox. You'll have them there, right? The, the yes, old, we're bringing the, the three, one from last year. We're bringing three hundred of them. And you might be able to, you know, do some little signatures in there, huh? Well, I'm going to be signing them, and, and I'll be doing some drawings in them too, awesome. as well. And that's for the for your first book, right? The yes. first two books. Yes. The hundred drawings and the art outs. Love this comment from Unusual Chair on YouTube says, "This feels like lurking Picasso outside his window. So awesome to watch." <laughs> <laughs> How do you like that, Vedante? Did you like that comment about Picasso? What did he say? I missed it. <laughs> says. Uh, he said, this feels like lurking Picasso outside his window. So awesome to watch. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> not a huge fan of Picasso, personally, but hey, whatever floats your boat. <laughs> <laughs> whatever floats your boat, man. Look up who he was in real life. Maybe maybe you'll get a different impression of him. Uh, La Porta D uh, on YouTube asks, were you affected by uh, Ian at all? Yes. Not very badly. Not yeah, near, we we not lost power. That was, that's kind not of nearly as bad as our uh, our friends down south. Yeah. Yeah, I know someone that lost a roof off their house in Cape Coral. Um, 
your your buddy in Naples, he's with the fire department, so yeah, he was um, able to see it all. I have a good, very good friend of mine that I actually wanted to do a benefit for uh, when we get back. Um, he actually raised money for me to go to college. Uh, he's got a gallery. He taught me auto- watercolor lessons when I was a in kid. In Fort Myers? In Naples. Oh, in Naples. And uh, he ended up with five feet of water in his gallery. In his gallery. And all the art was in there, right? Yeah, a lot of it was. Horrible. Not all of it, but a lot of it was. I mean, a lo- I mean, you can maybe salvage an oil painting or an acrylic, but not a watercolor. <laughs> nope. Everything on paper is just destroyed. Yeah. I can't imagine getting flooded here. You know? Oh, Nick just texted me set saying that uh, they should mention about uh, the about Kim Jong Ji. Yeah, I've been trying to uh, find the right time for that. Um, so very unfortunate. We've had such so many kind of horrible things happen over the last couple of weeks that you know some personal things and losing relatives and. Uh, we lost our, our pet dog, uh, Max, yesterday. And uh, we just had a lot of, a lot of stuff happening. Yeah. I was trying to keep everything kind of upbeat, but we also lost, the art world lost a great master. Um, been a huge fan for years and years, and, and such a wonderful guy, too, Kim Jung-ji, um, who many of you probably know, and if you don't know him, look him up. Uh, he passed away suddenly um on the fourth of a heart attack in paris and uh on his way to new york for the new york comic-con and um uh and he was gonna you know be heading out to lightbox after that he's only 47 yeah he's only 47 but just such a wonderful man and uh and just the best artist i've ever seen uh alive and uh just in, in, absolutely incredible. So, Master Kim Jung Ji from South Korea. Um, if you don't know of his work, like I said, look him up and become familiar with his work. Nobody could draw like him. Nobody. And you spent some time um, with him in, in Icon Melilla one yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know I was able to see him work um, at Lightbox. Wasn't it Lightbox? Or uh, yes. Yep. Yeah. He usually does all those, yeah. Oh, what? so horrible. Watching him work was just crazy because it's mem- there's mesmerizing. There's no reference. Yeah, he he's was... just drawing these huge like scenes with all different kind anything. It, he was. It's, um, it's crazy. I've never seen anybody do what he was able to do. Yeah, I remember my very first, uh, um, my first experience of CTN, and uh, in the after hours we were at the, uh, we were hanging out in the uh, lounge area, and Dad and I were walking by and we saw Kim Jong Ji at a table, and <laughs> and Dad just started fangirling. <laughs> yeah, he's the oh, only yeah. artist that I would just fanboy with. He's like, oh my god, he's like, go oh talk god. to him. No, 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 no. no. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to talk to him. He doesn't know me. He's just such a, an amazing, amazing artist. He's so prolific. Yeah. You think of how many pieces he created. Oh, man. And he taught all over the world, didn't he? He did. So you can see there's a slight drag that I'm putting on the head here. Uh, what size of screen is that for the iPad? Uh, I just made it whatever to fit the screen. I'm not sure what the pixels were. I just showed chose the. I mean, is the is the tablet screen like a twelve? Is it twelve inch, eleven inch? Oh, this the the dis- the display itself. Oh, it's uh, it's, it's the iPad Pro, whatever that is, it's thirteen inches, I think. 
Have you ever used an Intuos tablet? In, yes. How is that compared to Wacom? Um, a Cintiq. It's, well, it, Intuos is Wacom, right? Oh, is yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah Intuos it, it's, it's is the... the, it's, the uh, um, it's the tablet Oh, version. okay. Yeah, it's not. It's it's the it's the one that's without a screen on it. It's the it's the one that you I don't like use them. like the pen like as though it's a mouse. Yeah, that's why I that's why I use a Cintiq. Oh, it's like a drawing pad, and you see it yeah. on a screen, but draw it on the pad. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah, that seems counterintuitive for me. It's not as hard as you think, but it's just it's still not comfortable. At least not for me. For me. For me. Yeah, it's funny how. Like I, I got really used to using that that style of uh, um, Intuos on while we were working at, at Digital Domain, but after that, I just couldn't get the hang of using it outside of that that particular work. Yeah. Like even when I went to uh, Stereo D, like I I I couldn't even use the the Intuos at all. I all I could do is stick with the mouse. It was only a stereo D. I don't know what it was. <laughs> Zidena Goku, I'm not I'm butchering that name. Um from Twitch says, Yeah, I feel like the Cintiq will be nice once I can get one. The Intuos is really tough for me. LOL. Yeah, I think the the, the hand eye thing, I like to see what I'm drawing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like I don't know. It's weird. I can't see using one of those. I mean, it's it's not like when you when you draw, you can't see at all where you're drawing. Because I mean, you do see your mouse cursor, but it does. But it if your eye and hand coordination is not used to it, then it can be a yeah. problem. But it's just over time, you could eventually get over that problem, and it becomes fluid. But so you're gonna fully in between this guy today, or are you? Um, yeah, I just you... want to get a nice smooth movement so you can see how to do this. You guys, let me know how long we're on. Uh, Roger on um, uh, YouTube comments is saying I I had to send my Cintiq 32 Pro in for repair. There's too many stuck pixels. Oh, uh, that stinks. Yeah, um, you haven't really had huge issues with any of your, your Cintiqs. They've all been pretty great. Yeah. <clears throat> I've got to get a, a little bit of a repair done on the, the one here, but it's got some weird ghost imaging happening, but I've had it for years. Uh, Shelly on Facebook says, is that Vivacious V? I just got on here. Yeah, and I'm um I'm looking at questions from Twitter um and Twitch today. Twitter's like a ghost town, but Twitch is pretty lively. So it is indeed quite lively. Quite lively, quite lively. Quite lively. And a lot of first time chatters on the uh Emilio Galvez and uh Emilio Estevez, what? Uh, no, and I can't read I don't know if it's Korean. I can't read that name, but I see first time chat. Emilio, Emilio! And I saw him and I was like, Emilio! <laughs> oh, nobody knows that reference? Okay. I can't Night remember. Night at the Roxbury. Night at the Roxbury. Oh. Will Ferrell and Chris Kattan. And I haven't watched that movie they, or even seen any reference of that movie They talk in about years. seeing Emilio. He's like, one night I saw him and I was like, Emilio! Emilio! <laughs> and then they see Richard Greco instead. Mm. <laughs> From 21 Jump Street? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm an idiot. Sorry. <laughs> Account mail on, on YouTube asks, uh, are you getting the new 27-inch Wacom? Uh, probably not. Well, actually, we might if we, ha if we have a need for it. How big is the one you've got that I'm staring at right 32. now? 32. That's so. a thir that there's a 30. Day. That there's a 32. And I think I might have the, tw is it 27 that I'm about to set up with the old one? Yes. The one you used to work on, yeah. Yes. What's the difference in the new ones? More pixels or something? I don't know. Um, 
I think it's more customizability of the pen and better sensitivity overall. Customizability? I love customizability, it. yeah. Love it. It's a great word. And uh, and also, um, I, I think it's uh, sharper 4K quality. I, I, I'm just kind of guessing, but I'm sure that's what the features are. Gumball273 on Twitch says, but hey, you can get the new Cintiq Pro 27 now for the low, low price of $3,500. $3,500? Yeah. yeah. Let's, that's, what it's, that's what this guy's saying. But um, you get what you pay for. There's nothing else on the market, I feel, that's like the Wacom, is there? The Cintiq. I mean, there's Huons and things like that, but I just, I've, I've always been a Wacom guy. That's what Disney used for years, and so I just stuck with it, and I love, I love Wacom. And the iPad is great for on the go. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I've had iPad. thoughts of getting uh, of getting an iPad to make things easier to uh, photo edit on on the go. But... Not Dustin. Not an Apple. The only thing I would ever invest that is Apple related is likely a tablet. <laughs> that is it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Aaron, will you do a new uh, sketchbook tour video by chance or studio tour? He he loves uh, Lieutenant Kenemy says he loves those type of videos. Sure. Lariah three three five on Twitch. Do you believe there um there's a way to there's a way to bring back two D animation films in theaters? Yeah, we just got to make them. Which is one of the reasons I'm making Snow Bear. You know, who knows? You know, as long as we're keeping the art alive, someone will notice. There's whispers that Disney might be um, dipping their toe back into 2D, but yeah, it's all conjecture at this point. I think it's going to happen. There's a market oh. for it. People want to see hand drawn. I know I do. And so I guess one of the other. Uh key features of of the new 27 inch is it has a it's doubled in refresh rate so instead of a 60 hertz screen it's a 120 hertz screen that's pretty cool yeah that's nice and also uh, possibly a uh, better reaction timing on the pen oh okay so less likely to uh, uh, to be so laggy when you're trying to draw. Yeah, I never had any issues, but um, yeah, I've never. Good. The only time I get lag issues is when the computer's not. Yeah, when the powerful. computer's overloaded. But huh, that's cool. I mean, they've, they've got to improve it somehow, or say they are uh -huh. better sensitivity and better. You know, I mean, it's already so good. But. Uh. James Clapham, Clap, Clapham, Clapham, uh, asks, is uh, Procreate your main iPad app uh, for animation? Yes. Have you tried any of the other animation apps like Rough Animator? No. I don't usually animate on my iPad. So, um, so Procreate is pretty much my go-to. On your iPad. Here, I'm pushing these eyebrows up. Really love this brush, this pencil brush. Feels sketchy. Uh, Kasras, uh, did you go to Yellowstone when you went to Wyoming? No, we didn't make it. We went to Dubois. Dubois? Dubois, Wyoming. For the Susan K. To Black Dubois. Um, artist retreat. It's pretty cool. It was fun. It's pretty cool. There's some awesome people. My favorite highlight of the trip was seeing the petroglyphs with Greg Beecham. Yeah. Mm. Um, that was pretty amazing. And seeing his studio was awesome. He is an amazing wildlife artist. If you guys don't know Greg Beecham, look him up. Another another amazing artist. Yeah, he was great. He's a great guy to hang out with and talk to. And uh, he and when we went to Africa together, he gave me some good pointers uh, 
when I was editing my photos. Yeah. Hey, look at that. We've got some animation here. Animation! Evil Demon um, says, Hey, Aaron, I found you. Hey. <laughs> I found you for the How to Draw <laughs> Scales tutorial on YouTube, and it helps me so much with some um, commissions currently living as a freelance illustrator. Oh, that's great. I almost said tutorials on Git. He just did YT. I realized it was YouTube. <laughs> I'm old. Yes. Officially, as of tomorrow, you On are. Oh, officially, as of 44 is old, I guess, huh? Actually, I'd give anything to be 44 again. Thanks for the birthday, witches. Uh, have you used uh, an 11 inch iPad? And if you have, uh, does it limit you from doing anything that 13 inch iPad can do? Uh, I haven't really used it, no. I, so, um, I mean, it, it, smaller for me is always negative. Bigger, bigger, I like better. Bigger when it comes to art. Size matters. <laughs> <laughs> no, you just had with, to go there. With drawing, it's fun to draw big and broad, right? Yeah, that's, I just like that's my preference. If they come out with a bigger 32-inch Cintiq, I'm going to buy it. If they make one the size of a chalkboard, I'll buy it. <laughs> Take my money. Any good movies lately? We actually saw a really good movie recently, didn't we? Oh, Nope was amazing. Nope was amazing. So original. Yeah, I watched a sci-fi film the other day called Vesper uh, that I really liked. Visually, it's really well thought out. It, ever... it was a slow, intimate movie. It's definitely a slow burn. So if you're not into a slow burn, it's not... But visually, it had some really original ideas, I think. Yeah, yeah I, I thought story-wise, it had some really original ideas as well. Have you ever thought about doing a children's book with funny animal characters and having uh, important morals to the story? Um, I, I don't know about morals. I have no morals. <laughs> what are morals? <laughs> Morels are a delicious mushroom. It's a delicious mushroom. No, it's it's, it's uh, you know the the ways to live your life. Um, I've got a children's book. I've got we got to get it published. Our little alphabet book. Oh, it's, up to, it's actually up there. Your alphabet book? Yeah. It, it, oh, you didn't you do that in high school? I mean, in I, college? I did that in college, yeah, and I've still got it. Uh, well, I feel like instead of a, a book, you do your stories through animation. That, that's like I do, yeah. That's your kid's story. Instead of in a book form, it's a film. Absolutely right. But do you feel you would have found the inspiration to pursue animation uh, just the same if you were born in today's animation technology? Uh, that's a hard question. There's so many variables. I don't know that I would have found animation had I turned left instead of right at, at the right time. You know, the way I came into the world or in, into the animation world, I really fell into it by accident. It was just, I just happened to be at the right place at the right time. I never had any, any interest in animation. So for me to sp stumble upon it and, and fall in love with it, a lot of things had to happen the right way. Uh, Maggie Dento on YouTube just donated $5 and says, Hey, Aaron, uh, do you like working at bigger studios or smaller independent studios? Smaller independent studios like mine. <laughs> <laughs> and I want some doll hairs. <laughs> giving them all to Aaron. Um, what do you think about AI art? Any thoughts, Aaron? Um, you know, I didn't think much of it a couple of months ago, but now I, I'm starting to think more and more of it, consider it more. 
Um, I think it's a little crazy. I think uh, I do. St I am starting to think that people are going to lose out a little bit on jobs because companies will just use AI for their illustration needs and things like that. Um, I don't think it'll. it'll uh, I don't. I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know beyond that. See, I feel like just like digital art. It's just going to, AI art is just going to be an addition. It's not going to be a subtraction. It's going to add to the artistic community. I know that's a dangerous thing to say, but. Um, anyway. I think it's just another way to make us lazier. Um, someone has to, but someone has to program those, those, the AI. No, it's really, I mean, it's getting to the point where they just input the information and you get the output. It's really, you know, it's, it's not. It's... Yeah, but it'll always be what it is, an AI piece of art, which will always be different from an original handmade piece of art by a human being. They're never going to be able to pass off AI art as a human-made art. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just, I don't know that that's true. That's my point. I think they're having that same issue in the music world. I I saw something on um I heard something on NPR the other day. This they guy, are. Yeah, he he created he created a um program where you input a bunch of like Chopin's music yep. and then it, it'll create a new piece of music in the exact same style exactly. based on uh algorithms. I was stuff. actually looking at some stuff like that for uh to come up with temporary score for Snowbear. And, and of I, I came course, across that. Yeah, of course, um, you know, musicians hate it and are against it. But you have to look at pros and cons, I think, of something new and innovative. It's scary, but it could have a place. It kind of reminds it that that sort of segment makes me think of um, there's an anime that I watched on Netflix a, a little while ago called Carol and Tuesday. And it's these uh, two girls that um, that live in this future where we've colonized Mars. And the music industry, there's human singers, but all the songs and lyrics are done through AI in, in these different forms. And Carol and Tuesday meet each other and they start naturally making music without without the use of AI. And everyone's like, that you can really do that yeah exactly and without ai without ai and and they, and they make great music together i can make same. music without an eye <laughs> <laughs> you can uh, do it without two eyes <laughs> just you need two ears and a brain and a heart who needs eyes when you have ears <laughs> trying to get that's a little bit more precise. and just like with cg I feel like AI art is cold. It It, it is a little bit less um, intimate or something. You know what I mean? Like, it's there is a coldness to it. That's why I don't like a lot of CG movies. So it's harder to watch than the hand-drawn. Well, I mean, every step takes you further and further away from the traditional means of doing things, right? So, I mean, that's always been my, my point. And I'm not saying this is necessarily a bad thing for our industry. But, you you know... Back when I started in the industry, you couldn't be an animator without being an artist. You had to be able to draw to do traditional animation in the in the way that we were doing it. You had to be able to draw. Drawing was our language. If you could not communicate through drawing, you couldn't get a job doing what we're doing. But many animators now don't draw. They don't have to draw because of CG animation, which I think is cool because it brought more people into the industry. But you do lose a little bit of that communication, I think, to a certain degree. Well, that's what traditional painters feel about uh, you drawing on an iPad. That's different because the input is still the same. Um, as far as, you know, I'm still drawing. I'm still going through the act of drawing. It's just a different set of tools. Well, I think, yeah, that's true. But artists, they might not see it that way. But... The thing with AI, yes, it's um, 
it takes out the human element. Yeah. So it's not, it's a computer doing the thinking. Yeah. See, with CG animation, it's still, you know, you still have to use the same principles and, you know, things like that. And, 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 uh... well, I think society as a whole has become so technology dependent, you know, this is just another step in that being dependent on technology. Look at that head turn. Now it's getting smoother and smoother. It's getting there. So smooth. So smooth. smooth. So smooth. Just like my forehead. Are you a fan of Don Bluth? And are you aware that he only uses paper still to animate? I'm not aware that he only uses paper, but I am very aware of Don Bluth. Yes, we're, we're aware of each other. You're aware of each other. That's we're we're aware, aware of each other. We're aware of each other. Are you self-aware? Yes. I you achieved consciousness? <laughs> I have become self-aware. Please I have. continue to hold. <laughs> I am now self-aware. I love when I get um, robocalls or just like random telemarketers and I just... Yeah. I do my voice, you know? <laughs> That's funny. Thank you uh, for calling. Please stay on the line. Someone will be with you shortly. <laughs> now, the really, the really annoying... Please continue to hold. Now, the really annoying is when, like, like I want to talk to a representative uh, from, like, whether it be, like, Wells Fargo or, like, uh, or Auto Nation if I need to get an oil change. But then it's, like, the... Uh, if you... Like, um, if you want to schedule an appointment, please press one. <laughs> if you yeah. want to talk to a representative, please press two. And you press and, two and then it's not a representative. It gets another menu. Or, or when you press, <laughs> or when you press two, like, I'm sorry. Unfortunately, we don't have any representatives available at the moment. Please, please hold until, until the next representative. Estimated followed wait by time. Elevator music. One hour, four minutes. One hour and four minutes. <laughs> Would you still <laughs> like to wait? <laughs> <laughs> I've started adding, um, thanks for calling Cynodyne, where AI matters. <laughs> Solving all your integrated systems needs. Oh, fun. And then I usually get someone on the other line that's like, what the heck is this? And then they hang up. <laughs> Skynet. What is <laughs> Yeah, Skynet, exactly. Cynodyne. <laughs> <laughs> Skynet, where AI the becomes self-aware. <laughs> Skynet, the birthplace of AI. <laughs> hey, Aaron, for new people who want to try 2D animation um, but are unable to draw, for, um, so for, I'm unable to draw, so for my short-term goal is to be able to draw the fundamentals of shapes, Am I on the right path? Absolutely. Because everything we do in animation is shape-based. You know, when I'm drawing, well, you'll, really you'll notice that when I, when I start drawing this, the bear, it's, you know, I start out with circular shapes and work up. Bullet Billion says we all started with cave paintings. That's right. So, yeah, you start with your basics. The only way you're going to learn is by practicing every day, too. I'm so out of practice. I tried to draw an eagle head the other day and had to get Aaron to draw it. It's all right. I know. Huh. But now I can draw one. Martin Berger on Facebook asks you the... Uh, Martin Berger? Who's that? How, how long have you practiced that? But, oh, the, the, the AI voice. For like a year now, because <laughs> every time I get one of those calls from like, uh, I, I'm not going to be, yeah, by, by the telemarketers that want to sell me something, <laughs> then I just go it, right into it. Thank mm -hmm. you for calling. And, you know. You get them pretty good. How may I, I help I you? I do get them. 
because they know that it's a live call and it's not a, a recorded thing. So they're like, what? Confused. I remember one time I got a caller, but instead of acting automated, I, I just acted like, like I just answered the call like, hello. No, this is not Dustin. He's a little tied up at the moment. <laughs> He's a little tied up. I'm gonna talk, I'll talk on his rep, uh, I'm his representative or something like that. It's like Arnold, he's like, I let him go. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I dropped him off the cliff, you know? Um... Oh, he had to split. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Do not disturb my friend. He's dead tired. <laughs> Crispy Cactus asks, do you have any thoughts on posting art online and the impact it has? Um, sorry if it's a silly question. I'm considering posting some of my art and wildlife photos on Instagram for the first time, and I was curious if you guys have any opinions on that. Yeah, get it out there. What do you mean the impact that it has? I'm not sure I understand what the question is. Well, I think is. people are worried that it's like people are going to steal their art. No one's going to steal your art. Just get it out there. <laughs> no one's going to steal your art. And don't write big words across the top of it so that people know. Yeah, uh, that, those that are it, my big pet peeves. Just don't don't art. sign it huge, <laughs> so, you know. You don't need to do that. And then don't. And no one's no one's stealing your art. Um and and also you always say compete with yourself. Don't yeah. be comparing yourself to other artists. Compare yourself with yourself and how you progressed. And Al uh, Parodies, hopefully I pronounced that properly, uh, just donated twenty Canadian dollars. Wow. And writes, if you hadn't worked on animation, what other careers uh, did you like or what other things were you interested in? Musician. Uh, you said that it was almost by accident that you found animation. Thanks for doing this live session. I would have been a musician. Musician, eh? Yeah, yeah. me too. In another life, we probably were in a band together. That will be a voice actor. A little folk out. Yeah, voice actor? Yeah, I think so. And you could still do it, you know? Just move to Hollywood and um, eh. start eh. doing auditions. That move to Hollywood where it's $2,000 a, a month for, a for, a little, for, a little, <laughs> for a little 50 square foot space? No, thanks. <laughs> you get 25 square feet of luxurious Oceanside <laughs> apartment for only $20,000 a month. And you, and you get there as a little shed. Well, the New York ones are what get me. The size. Well, there, of these, there's one I just showed. Dad is like, like a six. Closet. It's like six hundred eighty-seven a month, and it's like a it's 60, 65, 65 square, square feet. feet. <laughs> it's sixty-five. Well, the, what they do and he has his bed the that's bunk, up on. Yeah, his bunk is on the second floor. That's a very floor. common thing now. Yeah. Uh, the price of real estate. I, I, just, I, I. Yeah, I look. I looked at my old place that I lived in before. Before the space I'm in now, where it was a. It was a two bed, one bath, um, like six hundred eighty five square feet, and I was paying eight seventy five a month at the time, and that included water. Um, and I looked at it again, like just a few weeks ago, and the new owners raised the price on that to thirteen seventy five a month. Yeah, wow. ridiculous. It's like for for that for that space. Yeah inflation it hits everybody yeah um eric atana atanak 74 i'm so bad at that um he's and he says i hate to disagree with aaron but i feel like there's a fair amount of online art theft even for small unknown artists nowadays yeah i i, I disagree with you still because uh, i i don't think it's there could be a fair amount but i still don't think it's uh it's not that prolific out there i really don't Yeah, and I mean, if you can find the people that are stealing it, I mean, don't you have intellectual property rights, you know? But exactly. It's like, you, yeah. But yeah if no one's people... making any money off your art, you know, if they steal it. They're not doing that. So they might pass something off as their own to, <laughs> to get a job I or mean, something. you could even argue that fan art is theft. Yeah, I, I, I definitely because think fan art Because if I draw is. a picture of Mickey Mouse and sell it, yeah, I know. I know a lot of artists that it's sell their your, fan art, and I just, I, idea. I refuse to do that. 
Martin Berger uh, asks uh, if if you were in a band, how would the what would the band be called? Uh, the Mango colostomy the bags. What the what? What the colostomy bags? Oh, colostomy that's bags. not. I was in a band called the Colostomy Bags. You were? Yeah. I was in another band called Boogers on the Bedpost. <laughs> oh, yeah, the, you, you guys just kept on changing the band name. Yeah, every time right. we performed, we changed our name. Oh, okay, okay. It was, it was, it was uh, you and like other Disney, uh, Disney uh, yeah, guys. Yeah, it was fun. I thought it was going to be, our group was going to be Mango in the Valley. That's right, there's that too. And then Feather and a Spark. Uh, Jorge on uh, YouTube asks, uh, how long have you been animating? I've been animating for 35 years. Started animating in 1988. 34 years, I guess. And uh, Son Goku asks, uh, do you have any tips for publishing books or comics? No, that I don't have tips on. I don't, I, 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 uh, uh, well, not comics anyway. Publishing books, it's it's just a matter of finding a good, uh, you know, there's different ways of doing it. There's self-publishing, there's finding a publisher. You know, I'm always a big advocate of self-publishing because then you, you know, you control everything and you reap the rewards. If you go to a, if you try to find a publisher and they decide to publish your book, you'll be lucky to make 10%. And, uh, you know, the, the, some people are fine with that and that's fine. I'm I'm not fine with that. I'd rather, you know, have a, a, a larger cut. Um, and then, you know, finding good printers. Especially if you're doing an art book. You know, finding good quality printers for the right price is, is not easy. What'd I miss? Had to refill my coffee. Absolutely nothing. Okay. Eleven. Eleven. Hmm. Yeah. Any movies you want to see that you haven't seen? Well, at the new Avatar, obviously, coming up. I want, I want to see that. That's not out yet, oh, yeah. right? No. Then they just re-released the first one. There's no theaters. movies out right now that I'm interested in seeing. That I, I do. It's Pearl. Yeah. What, what I know. That? It's it's not a kid's movie. Well, I'm not, I it's don't called watch Pearl. Kids Pearl. It, it's the um, prequel to X. It's by A24. It's a slasher. It's a slasher. Oh, okay. But I mean, uh, yeah, it's going to mm. be good. It's going to be good. It's Mia Goth. She's pretty awesome. Uh, Shelly on uh, Facebook asks, uh, who is your printer? Can you say? Oh, no, I can say. I just can't remember. <laughs> Nick has all that information. I can't remember who our printer was. Hey, Nick. Nick, if you, if where you're, are you? If, if you're, uh... He was commenting on, on um, he was posting stuff on Twitch, so maybe he's out yeah. there. So... Yeah, he's, yeah, he's kind of bouncing between. He's driving. <laughs> Either that or Selena likes to drive, so she might be driving. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Because I can only imagine Nick trying to who's our printer, trying to Nick? monitor through all, all four sites. No, he's not. He wouldn't be driving. That's irresponsible. No. With kiddos in the car. No, Selena loves to drive, so he's probably doing some work while she's driving. <coughs> uh, Pharma Kane on uh, YouTube asks, which Wacom tablet size do you recommend? 32. You can swing it, get a 32. Go for gold, baby. Go for if, gold. If not, I would say whichever you can afford. Whichever whichever fits yeah, your budget. Yeah, there you go. Buy the biggest one you can get. That's what I recommend. Yeah. Go to Kmart, put it on layaway. Kmarts don't even exist anymore, do they? Or, no. And neither does layaway. I'm old. Or, <laughs> Remember when you like put toilet paper on layaway? Yeah. I bet Dustin doesn't even know what layaway we were means. Poor. Do you know what do you know what layaway is, Dustin? Sounds familiar. It's when you go to Kmart and you get or, a bunch or of at, stuff. At Sears, you could do Sears. Sears. The layaway at Sears. 
and you go give it to this counter, the layaway counter, and you pay a small, a small amount and they hold it for you. And then over a few months, you pay a little bit each month until you pay it off and then they give you the stuff. Like, That's how you would get it. Oh, now so it's like a loan? Credit card. Yeah, but they would hold it. You, you couldn't have it until you paid it off, but you could reserve it. They would hold it for you. Yeah. Oh, no wonder why I was in that, that daycare for weeks at a time. <laughs> <laughs> Your mother and I purposely took a little extra time. He's like, where am I? Where am I? <laughs> Where's mommy? Where's daddy? I see him in a dog. I haven't seen him for a week. You're in like a dog kennel. You're like... You should draw a picture of baby Dustin in a dog kennel. Yeah. I, I've actually been in dog kennels a few times before. Where's mommy and daddy? <laughs> Shut up, kid. You bother me. Drink your bottle, kid. <laughs> uh, on uh, Twitch, as a kid, I bought my first skateboard in layaway. That's right. See, people don't know. They don't know. I feel like pawn shops still do that. Uh, I guess I guess pawn shops do a form of layaway. Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> it's a way. kind of the same thing, right? <laughs> it's highway robbery, but in a way. Uh, Fabio on uh, YouTube asks: Is it common to have um, have a struggle distincting the different colors of onion skin when animating? Uh, cheers from Brazil. You might have a red green uh, uh, color blindness going on. Oh, that's interesting because it is red green. So, yeah. Yeah, oh. do you ever mi mix that up though? Have you ever had that mistake where you where you've been like, which way is this way again? Oh, he's he means that the green is the big first one and the red is the second one. Oh, like, yeah, or oh, oh. which like, order they're in. Yeah, like have you ever mi no, mixed up the I order it, by accident? I got it pretty burned into my brain. It's got you got. No, I've, I've seen that happen though. He's yeah. brain burned. Uh, yeah, and that's kind of why you um, never really used onion skin when you were doing traditional animation, correct? Well, seeing through the paper was the onion skin. It was paper skin. Yeah. Well. <laughs> so. Oh, yeah. Nick is on here. He said, can confirm, Selena is driving. Selena is definitely driving. Driving you crazy. <laughs> You're fine. What was that? Did he, did he say what the... Um, no, he still didn't answer company? the question, though, but that's interesting. <laughs> Who's the printer? Was it in China? China? It was printed in China, but it's in an American shit. company, I It's thought. an American company. Okay. That prints. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll find out at some point. Nick, do the thing. <laughs> Mageburger asks, are you going to do a sequel to the, to the Batman thick drawing? The thick? <laughs> thick. Well, no. well, you should do Robin. <laughs> Robin thick. Yeah, Robin <laughs> thick. There is a Robin thick. I know, but... Blurred lines. Um... He got sued like crazy over that song. <laughs> he stole from Marvin Gaye's estate. Marvin Gaye's estate. Uh, he's... Yeah. So many people are getting sued now for their songs resembling other songs. Remember the one you always said that no one ever noticed? Wait yeah. a minute, Mr. Postman. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. oh, 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 oh. Uh... And it was similar to a song, but no one ever caught that one. What was that song? It, yeah. Well, I, I don't think Mr. it's a Postman from uh, The Carpenters. No, but no, it, no that it... was Neil Sedaka. Oh. Yeah, but there's a song nowadays that has that same opening. And because we're it's not the same, it's musically the same. That's what I mean. Yeah, and it's not. I mean, it's it's more of a doo wop kind of thing. I can't remember the name of that song. It's a, it's a contemporary song. And mm. it, it wasn't CeeLo Green, was it? No. Huh. I feel like a lot of artists nowadays are getting sued by estates for stealing, um, like just series of notes. You know, like Vanilla Ice, he's like, dun 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 dun, and ours is dun 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 dun. Nicholas Granola donated five dollars. Hey, thank you, Nicholas. And asks, did you put a fish in Tim Hodge's animation table one time? 
Did I do what? Uh, put a fish in Tim Hodges' animation <laughs> table. No, I didn't put a fish. Mm, I put I put a coleslaw. A coleslaw in, incident. In his, I put coleslaw in his paper stack. So they cut a hollow. But out there, there was also the other common prank of the uh, cheese yes, and the I, uh, we the put light. cheese on on each other's inside each other's animation discs. <laughs> Wow. They put them right next to the uh, uh, the disc light, which gave off a lot of heat, didn't it? They worked hard and played hard, <laughs> I suppose. Oh, yes. What about the chocolate underneath the door handle of their car? Did you guys ever put <laughs> chocolate? Or was it real oh, poop? Oh, yeah. No, was that it was, real poop? No, that was real poop. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to. No, the fake, the fake chocolate one was, was in like the... Was that like Tony uh... Cipriano involved in that one? Yes. Uh, the... the... The fake, the, the one with the, what was it, Hershey's bar? That was in the bathroom. Mm. That was in the, uh, the public men's bathroom. Yeah. So there's, there's it uh, playing back on ping pong. So you can see. Ping pong. Some nice, smooth animation of him turning his head. And that's really how easy it is to animate and procreate. Let me, actually, I want to, let me add a couple of slow ins so we can actually do the ping pong back and forth and um i'm going to add a slow in or a slow out i should say right in here I'm going to take this uh, quick moment to me to mention again about the, the sales and everything that's going on today. Yes, please. Sorry, uh, this weekend only, we have ourselves a animal drawing lesson sale. And any of these uh, drawing sales are currently 70% off. That is 7-0, 70 70% off this weekend only. So be sure to go over to CreatureArtTeacher.com, find yourself a couple of animal drawings, and uh, courses. get some courses. <laughs> I meant, meant to say courses kind of cut <laughs> off there. Courses. But um, yes, get some courses out there and uh, and uh, enjoy that. And sale. learn to draw. Learn to draw. Draw with me. Like the gun draw? And uh, Wild West? we now have a second volume of uh, the art book that's coming out soon. And they're available uh, for pre-order. And the first 500 orders is guaranteed a signed copy. Uh, so go go over to uh, creatureartteacher.com slash books to pre-order the volume volume two of the new uh, art book. And uh, USA customers get free shipping with code USA Books. And also and also coming up down the road is uh, the live art workshop for four days which is going to be cabin camping with uh, Dad and Ronnie Wilford from November 7th to, through to the 10th. And there's only five spots left, so be sure to go over to CreatureArtTeacher.com slash camp to, uh, to get yourself a spot. There's only five left, right? Only five. Yeah. Well, when we made the slide, we don't know. No, we made the slide, so we, we don't know if, they, if they're all sold out already. They're sold but... out, though, when they click on it, right, if it's done? Yeah. It's only thirty guests, right? Yeah, it's only yeah, 30. thirty. Thirty yeah. artists. So so 30 far, artists. there's twenty. There's twenty five that's coming right now. Oh, yes. Crazy. So. Crazy. It's freaking crazy. Yeah. So I'm gonna add another slow in. One more at the beginning. We're gonna get this nice and very nice and uh, very nice. Very nice. Uh, Martin Berger asks, will there be free shipping for uh, people in other countries, too, like European people? No. Uh, unfortunately, There's no, no free shipping. Well, there's free shipping to everybody in Europe except Martin Berger. Mar except for Martin. <laughs> Martin what? has to pay hey, up. Don't pick on my buddy. <laughs> my buddy and me. I do love Martin Berger. No, sorry, Martin. We, I, we can't afford free shipping to Europe. But we'll meet one day, Martin. One day. Yeah, because last time shipping to Europe was way more expensive than we, we had actually thought. underestimated. Yeah, you, ended up, you guys ended up losing some money. We killed it, us. Yeah, yeah, killed us in the end. But 
Everyone got their books. Uh, Marjo on uh, YouTube says, Today ju just bought animal courses. Excited to watch them. Awesome. Using the sale to your advantage. Brilliant. So cool. Only 170% off. Hundred and seven. That's we pay that, you. That, that, we pay you money. <laughs> Eric got to Seventy four said, "Would love to attend the art camp, maybe in the future." So nice of you to do the camping trip. Uh, Maggie Dento uh, donated five dollars again. And it says, if someone with less of a following who has a ton of great art uh, created an art book, do you think anyone would read it? Well, I mean, it's hard. If you're, if you're an unknown, it's, it's hard to get it out there, right? So it's really, that's why I love social media so much nowadays. I mean, that's a, it's a tool that we never had back when I was trying to get off the ground. The ability to get on social media and and, and get your work seen um, is awesome, and so and it's so much faster than it ever was in years past. Um, so focus on that. Focus on getting seen. Yeah, it, it is really hard. Whether it, yeah, a book or anything, when you don't have a following or or a somebody that's or just do a smaller a smaller it. edition you know you don't have to publish four or five thousand of them you can publish you know a hundred of them i wrote a small novel like a novella like in 2010 and put it on amazon i sold 10 copies and i bought six <laughs> so <laughs> i think it's cool though to to say you've written a, a you've written a novel yeah, it is cool to say it. I've got a couple around here somewhere. Uh, Farmer Kane on YouTube asks, uh, I'm handicapped. Does anyone know any tech that can help me for drawing? I don't know what, what uh, the handicap is. It would help to know, to understand what your handicap is. There is a lot of tech out there for, for different people with, you know, different things holding them back. Like if you can use your hands or if you're blind or can't, you know, with, uh. with the... And um, Macchiato asks, uh, what brush are you using? Can you show us, please? It's the Procreate Procreate Pencil. Procreate Pencil. Procreate Pencil, right there. Someone here said they accidentally had deleted their Procreate Pencil. Oof. Off of it when they got their iPad. They I didn't even know that you could. I, I didn't even know you could delete default pen, uh, I don't know. I said brushes. they accidentally deleted it. Then you probably need to reinstall. <laughs> I might, the brushes that I've created on the website all my custom brushes they work in procreate as well you can in import them even the number seven brush yeah yeah your most famed brush of all time original pack number seven yeah i'm <laughs> trying to think do i have it in this version i don't know if i have it on this one i do love your brushes too here's my aaron's custom brush here it is my pastel brush right here you've got a lot of great foliage brushes I'd like to say And I remember liking your cloud brushes. Those were great. Yeah, those were fun. They were fun to make, actually. My favorite brushes that I've made that, you know, kind of assist in creating imagery like that mm -hmm. are my cloud brushes and my, um, my water brushes. Technology at work. That one, they both required a lot of kind of thought on how to create them. That's what I, I love the problem solving aspect of creating brushes, especially when you're making brushes like to, the, to, to fulfill a certain need. Doesn't there like tilt and scatter and all these different. Yeah, there's all these different things and you got to figure out how to get the pattern to work in a way that it's going to look like something else like water. I think you've, you've done tutorials on creating brushes before, which is oh, yeah. super interesting. 
Yeah, it's in my there. It's in my digital painting course, but I've also got a couple of videos that I just did specifically on for YouTube. that on, on my YouTube. How many frames per second is your uh, Procreate animation? Right now, I've got it set at fourteen frames a second. I'm going to go ahead and set it. Oh, I was expecting an answer like seven. Seven? No. This is my last drawing. Very tight. Uh, Shelly uh, on Facebook asks, uh, are some brushes included in lessons? I think I got some no extra cost. Yes. Phone call. Hello. Greetings. I am an AI. So that's how you do a little head turn in Procreate. Such a great program to use. Once again, I'm going to set it on ping pong. It's already set on ping pong. Ping pong. Oh, farmer came from uh, that had, that asked about um, the disability. It says uh, from neck down, I can't use my hands. Oh, gotcha. Huh. So. Um, there's definitely, yes, there's definitely stuff out there that will enable you to uh, use your, uh, I've seen people do stuff with their mouth, um, all kinds of different or things. Or voice, maybe? Yeah. Huh. So there he is. There's his head turned. One of the big things, too, I, wanted to, I want people to realize is look at the arcs. You know, I, I didn't just simply turn his head toward the camera. You know, we try to keep things dynamic when we think about animation. And one of the ways to do that is thinking about arcs, the drag of the ear. Notice how the ear drags, um, the blink of the eye, little things like that that add to the, just so it's not just a straight turn. It makes it more dynamic. He looks alive. The idea of the eye opening a little wider and then settling in. Um, we can speed it up, too. There you go. Just to get a little bit of dimensionality there. Dimensionality? Dimensionality, another new word. Hmm. I think I missed uh I missed a, some fur under his chin somewhere. No, well, I guess I got it. Felt like it was popping off. Yeah. Guess you got it. So there you go. There's Snow Bear saying Hello. Hi. Hello. Hello. Snow bear, are you a grizzly bear? No. He's shaking his head no. <laughs> you can, uh... No, I'm a polar bear. <laughs> <laughs> Very quick. Here we go. 24 frames a second. What happens if you like max out the speed? <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> go full speed. Flickers. It just oh. <laughs> so there you go, folks. I hope you enjoyed that. It was a lot of fun. Um, try it if you if you have Procreate and uh, you've got an iPad, uh, give it a shot. It's a lot of fun to animate. Uh, like I said, I've been animating for years, and so being able to get in here and do this kind of thing um, mm. so quickly and so easily. Uh, is really joyful. <laughs> it's very joyful. Um, I love animating little little loops like this. Uh, we'll do more of these. And uh, and like I said, I'm going to be doing uh, another lecture involving Procreate Animation out at the Lightbox event in Pasadena, California, next week, starting next weekend, a week from tomorrow. It's going to be so much fun. Yeah, it's going to be a blast. We're really looking forward to it. Uh, if you guys can make it, if you're in the area, come on out and see us. Um, like I said, we're going to be selling our book signed uh, and maybe get a little drawing in there. Um, and that's the uh, the first volume that we're going to be Yes, volume one. There. 
Remember, volume two is in pre-order. So if you want to get, if you've got volume one, uh, excuse me, and you want to get volume two, then go on over to creatureartteacher.com uh, slash books, and you can get that, or, or you can pick up both. Uh, actually, I recommend if you don't have the first volume, um, get in there and buy one now because we've only got 30 left, and I'm not sure when we're going to be doing any reprints. So, uh, so there you go. And as it says on the slide, the first five, 500 uh, or, uh, new orders for the volume two is guaranteed a signed copy. Yes. And U.S. customers uh, get free shipping with the code USA Books. And it won't be signed by an AI. Signed, it'll be it'll be by legitimately signed, signed by Aaron in person. His hand with yes, a, yeah, that's right. In, person. in fact, we might do a uh, um, a video recording or a stream of, just to prove it's not that. an AI signature. That's yeah, we right. did we did something like that in the uh, during the last one where we were all we were packing, up. we're back yeah, we boxing and packing. Live. Oh, that's gonna be that's when that's you did the random all the random drawings in them. But we also this weekend have the animal sale. Uh, flash sale going on this weekend only um, and the animal drawing lessons are are 70% off only for this weekend so 70%. go over there creatureartteacher.com and get those uh, those uh, blah, blah, blah. I can't talk but go over and get those animal drawing lessons and then also coming up is the workshop that's going to be happening uh, from November 7th through to the 10th with Father Aaron and uh, and Ronnie Wilford over Wilford 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 it's Wilford but it's gonna be a, a live art workshop for four days and it's gonna be cabin camping and it's gonna be fun. Someone's gonna be cooking all the food too. Guess who? Guess who? That's mm. me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, but. Man, so uh, only five spots left, so go over to CreatureArtTeacher.com slash camp if you're interested in uh, joining in on the fun. And, um, yeah, hope to see you here. All right. We're going to sign off. Hope you guys have a great weekend. Uh, we're going to be leaving next Wednesday, so our Friday stream for next week will not be happening. Um, and for those of you that are members and tune in with us every Tuesday and Thursday for uh, Snow Bear, um, we will be doing our Tuesday live stream, uh, but we will not be doing our Thursday, obviously, because we're going to be out of town. So I hope you guys have a great, beautiful, safe weekend. Um, have a safe week if we don't get to see you next week, but uh, we'll be back again the following week. Go on out there, put some beauty back into the world, because that's what we do as artists. Make somebody's life better, all right? And put your uh, shopping cart away. I haven't said that in a while. <laughs> it, it's been driving me nuts. We go into the grocery store, shopping carts everywhere. It's just everywhere, just all over the floor, yeah. so, all anyway, over the walls. Have a great weekend. I'll talk to you later, guys. Thanks. <laughs> Bye. Cowboy Bebop. Please continue to hold. <laughs>